Hello, I'm Rebecca from Berry's Wine School and today in our podcast we're going to look at red wines. In particular we're going to look at Merlot, then we're going to look at Cabernet Sauvignon, then we're going to look at two styles of claret, red wine from Bordeaux. Now let's begin with Merlot. The key to understanding Merlot is that it's a big grape, it enjoys growing in the sun. When it grows in the sun, it ripens, it masses lots of sugar, and as we know, that sugar gets converted into alcohol in the winery. So Merlot gives generous alcohol. And that's also helped by the fact that it has a thin skin. Now, that tannin we talked about, that substance underneath the red skin, um, it's softened by the masses of alcohol and juicy uh, fruit that Merlot can give you. Um, often the, the nose of a Merlot is described in plummy terms, you know, that could be damson fruit or it could be rich plum pudding. This one from Chile has got lovely, lovely damson fruit and I'm really invited to taste the richness of the wine. Let's go. Mmm. Mmm. Merlot gives a lovely mouth-filling wine. It's really soft. It's like sitting and relaxing in a big comfy sofa, a leather armchair, something like that. That's how I think of Merlot. It's got all that comfort of richness and full body. Now let's contrast it to Cabernet Sauvignon. This grape is much smaller and it has a thicker skin. So there isn't as much juice in the Cabernet and it has more tannin in the mix. So you get a much more structured wine from Cabernet Sauvignon. Its key notes on the nose are often linked to black currants. Let's have a try. Now I put my nose in here and I've got distinct cassis notes and also there's just a lovely little whiff of coconut and vanilla which is telling me it's had a little bit of oak treatment when the winemaker was making the Cabernet Sauvignon wine. So it's a lovely rich mix. Let's try it and see how much tannin there is. Mm, you see, you really have to chew the wine, excuse me, and, and mix it all around your palate. And then you notice this astringency on the insides of the cheeks right across the tongue. That's the Cabernet Sauvignon tannin. And it's the tannin that helps this wine to age for a long time. So if you were ever considering to buy wine that was going to age for say 25 years, Cabernet Sauvignon is a good component to have in your wine because it gives that longevity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to claret. Now claret is red wine from Bordeaux and Bordeaux is a region so famous and so influential on the rest of the world uh, for its production of red wine. And claret comes at all different price points. At Berries we're intensely proud of our good ordinary claret which is this wine here. It's a fabulous delicious everyday drinking wine and the reason we have it here today because it's actually a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. So you've got the richness of the Merlot grape mixed in with a little bit of structure from Cabernet Sauvignon. And because it's in France, it has a lovely acidity and that's very good with food. Remember, acidity refreshes the palate when you're having food. And there should just be a little clinch of tannin. Let's have a look. So nose in the glass. For me, there's a lovely gravelly smell there with just a hint of berries. Hmm, that's really lovely. It's a medium bodied wine. It's got nice little clinch of tannin. You know, that really mixes well with protein when you're having wine and food together. The protein is soaking up uh, with the tannin. And now let's move on to Chateau Bataille. We love Chateau Bataille here at Berry Brothers and Rudd. It's a really classic 
claret. It comes from the commune of Poyac, and here they specialize in putting more Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend. Let's say about 70% to 30% Merlot. And this is because they like to have that tannin from the Cabernet Sauvignon dominating the wine in youth, because they know that it will help it age gracefully over a period of, let's say, 25 years. As you can see, this is 2003 vintage, so it's really quite young. Now, if you wanted to enjoy this wine this evening, let me give you a special tip. If you decant the wine, then you're going to soften it and in a way mature it more quickly so that those tannins aren't quite so aggressive. So decanting simply means pouring the wine into another vessel. And the key is you're pouring it through air and it is the air that is softening the tannin. So you can have lots of fun with decanting. Why don't you get the same wine and two bottles? Decant one of them and then enjoy the other one straight from the bottle. Compare and contrast and learn and decide which you prefer. Some people prefer straight from the bottle, others enjoy decanted wine. Another reason, of course, is to decant wine to get it off its sediment, those tannins that have fallen over time. But anyway, let's try the Chateau Bataille. Oh yes, that's fantastic. You've got a wonderful aroma there, very subtle, but of graveliness, reflecting the gravel stones of Poyac, and just a hint of cassis peeping through, and a little bit of vanilla, showing that it's been caressed in new oak as it's been uh, aged in the winery. Mm. Now, that's fantastic. You've got all this lovely framework of tan in there, just softening out nicely through the decanting, but that will really be fantastic with some lovely rare beef. And that cassis will just refresh the palate perfectly. Fabulous. Join me next time. We're going to look at Gewurztraminer and Riesling, and we're going to talk about restaurant wine lists. Enjoy.